major one I want to cover today is the creation and use of animation overriders, which also involves a trip through what animation controllers are and how animation controllers work. The other thing, if we get some time, is I would like to actually visit a few things relating to the gesture system. That one will depend a little bit on how much um, time we have left over today. But the first things first is I'd like to cover animation overriders, because that's something I think that we haven't particularly documented very well. So I have um, the editor pack project that I've been using for the last couple of classes. This is just a plain installation of the latest um, editor packs that are available on the asset store. And uh, to create an animation overrider, so I probably should start back what an animation overrider is. An animation overrider is a clothing item that is worn by an avatar that changes the built-in animations that are associated with that avatar. So for instance, if you want to have a walk that turns you into a drunken person, then you'd look at replacing the walk animations with um, your custom one. Our built-in animation uh, controller has about a hundred and something animations. The bulk of that is transition animations between various um, elements and we do quite a lot of mixing and blending. However, you don't need to build a hundred and something animations in order to build a sufficient overrider. Um, in previous versions of the Science Base SDK, we have actually provided a slot to place in a runtime animation controller. Now this is a full override of the animation system and we will get into why you'd want to do that in a minute. Um, however, one of the new features that we've introduced in the last set of packs has been the animation override section here. And if I say that I'm gonna override two animations, just enter the number two into the animations override section. So this is on the clothing item settings. You've got uh, animation controllers and overriders. Here, for instance, we can replace some of the basic animations. So for instance, we want, might want to replace the walk forward or walk backwards. Um, these animations will just simply swap out of the existing ones. We do have other animations that are not necessarily included in these overrides. Um, if there is one that you particularly need or want to see, uh, please just get in contact because we can add some more to this slots. Um, that are available. There is about a hundred in total and we've just been trying to avoid uh, crowding out the the bulk of the useful animations there. Um, however, we can actually override everything with the, the full controller. So to begin with, I think the most important thing to do is actually just get some basic animations in. Now today I'm going to use the Mixamo animation library. It's a fantastic resource owned by Adobe. Um, as you can see here, it's just got a whole bunch of animations. So we are going to create an animation overrider that might replace, let's see, we'll find a nice animation here and we'll replace some of the built-in ones. So what have we got that's gonna be an all right one? Let's say we wanna make our avatars idle look a bit different. So just trying to find a nice, nice idle animation. That'll look okay. Might as well use this basketball dribbling one. That's uh, probably gonna be okay. So when our avatar is idle, this is the, the pose we want it to, to take. So I'm just gonna download this animation. I'm gonna download it without skin because we don't need it. Um, we'll download it at 60 frames and we won't do any keyword um, reduction, key frame reduction. So let's uh, grab that one. We've got our FBX file here and we're gonna create a new folder here just for this particular project. So we'll create this one as Animation overrides. Now the process of actually importing this animation is pretty straightforward. One of the fantastic things about Unity is it's got a built-in animation system called Mechanim. Um, Mechanim basically allows you to retarget and retranslate um, animations from one skeleton to another. And there is some, some perks and some downsides to this system. And we'll go into that right now as we import this animation. Um, so the humanoid retargeting system works by converting the animation into muscle space. Um, for those not familiar with the ins and outs of, of um, complicated, in fact, what I'll do is I'll download this one just with the uh, with the rig so we can see it. So I'll drag, grab it with skin. Okay. So I've got this one here. This one. Um, so muscle space is basically, instead of representing the animation as a series of rotations and positions, which is what normal animation files do, like for instance BBH files, they will store just the rotations on each joint at each particular frame. Muscle space instead stores the length of each muscle. And that means that, for instance, we look at the, the amount of pull that is on your elbow, we look at the amount of twist there is on the elbow, we look at all those things as a per muscle 
um, value rather than as a rotation on the joint. Now the benefit of doing this is one that produces slightly more realistic animations uh, because things are sort of optimized for those particular bends and turns. And the second thing is that you can adapt those for similar humanoids. So for instance, humanoid A and humanoid B both have an elbow. Uh, and that means that you're able to say, all right, well, the, if the bone is at this position, um, when you start moving, um, then it'll be the same across both, both things. There are some downsides to this, uh, particularly the issues with uh, slippage. And I will get into that in a second. Uh, but just to get this started, we'll actually import this as an animation. So all these default settings, fine. The rig. Now the first thing we need to do is, right now, this particular animation, if we look at this uh, this file, it has the next so rig, which has got hips, legs, spine, spine one, spine two, yada, 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 yada. All those particular bones. And it's got those ones as particular names. Those names are very sensitive. If you're importing a generic animation, then the names of what's got to match. However, uh, if you look at um, the um, humanoid version, we actually get a completely different set. So to begin with, I'm just going to convert this to a humanoid animation. This one currently has animation tracks. Oh, sorry, go from here. Do I have animation on there? If I select uh, this one's animation tracks, you'll actually see that these are the, it's got rotation information. And I think it has some position information stuck in there too, just for correction. Usually things like shoulders and whatever has some slight correction as we, we play through it there. We'll, those are all the various keyframes. We're going to convert this to a humanoid animation now. So the first thing we do is go to the animator type and we convert it from generic to humanoid. Now, the next part is the avatar definition. Now, the avatar definition actually defines the, the layout of the avatar. It is best to create the avatar definition from a T-pose. Um, so that is, for instance, animation that's been imported with just one, one frame and uh, contains the avatar in a neutral position. Um, that means that we don't get weird weird assumptions made when Unity tries to guess what the humanoid structure actually looks like. So we can hit that and we don't tick optimize game objects. Um, there are some reasons why you'd want to tick that, but um, in this particular case, it's going to erase some data that we need. I'm going to see if I can download with the T-Pose as well. I don't think I can do that from here, but there was. Um, let me see if I can get T-Pose with their skeleton. Yeah, I'm just going to download the T-Pose and I'm going to do this just again from Mechanim, uh, sorry, from Nixamo, just so that we get the most accurate results. So I can show you a comparison of before and after. And I'm going to bring in here the T-Pose and I'll show you how to import the skeleton correctly in this manner as well. So, just wait for that one to import. Now that we've got this one imported, um, just for reference, we have the animation here. As you can see, this is the same one that we, we played before. Uh, and there's a few extra properties and things that we'll need to, to play with on here. So broadly speaking, that's come through okay. That's probably all right. However, and this is gonna be a question, if I just tick that to the Unity model, that's mostly good. It's actually not a terrible roll. We've got a little bit of slippage on the feet, as you can see here. And this is something we have to watch for. This particular set of slippage is not bad. Um, I would say it's almost imperceptible. I think we can even fix it. Um, yeah, uh, just taking a, a quick peek. But for instance, if we mask out the feet, for example, we could we could avoid that particular problem. Uh, I'm going to leave this alone because this one's good enough. But what I will do is I'll show you how to fix this if you do get slippage. So if we take the science-based avatars, let's go for the 2017 male and female. They both have an identical skeleton rig. There is no difference between them, even structurally. Uh, and we've done that just for the eight the aim of uh, better animation compatibility. So we just need to find one of these two that's got their rig imported. We got you. So we got a 2017 animation. I'm gonna go back to the animation overrides for this, this dribble one. And I'm gonna, down here in the bottom bottom right, there's a little uh, human icon in, in that sort of orangey brown color. If you click on that, you can change which model you preview with. In this case, I'm gonna select the 2017 male. And hopefully that works. No, we'll just try that. It's one of these. There we go, 2015 mail. That's fine. So we've got this one running on our avatars. And this is using the mechanism translation. Broadly speaking, again, the gaps on the feet aren't bad. Um, this will do fine. So this animation we can use straight away. Um, we haven't had too many problems. What I'm going to do though is just show you some best practices and I'll show you how to adjust these best practices. So the first thing we'll do is we've just got our T-pose animation here. And we're going to set this one to a humanoid. 
it's just fairly important to do that in all your animations, at least if you're going to be remapping them onto our avatars. Um, the exception is if you build them using our skeletal rig, then you can actually use them as generic, but uh, I would advise against that. I'd still advise using the humanoid. Um, so we've just got all that information in there. In fact, if you bring them in as a generic, it might break some other stuff, so it's probably best that you don't. Right, so I've got a humanoid in here, and um, looks good. Everything matches. Feet and so forth are where they should be. All looks good. Um, so that's our, our avatar, and then you'll notice that it's created what's called an avatar. Uh, this is a, a Unity reference. This is not related to sign space avatars in any way. Um, it's used as animations. And one of the options is when we import the animation, we can actually, instead of create from this model, we can do copy from other avatar, and we can just put in the T-Pose avatar that we built. This will be more accurate than the, the one it's automatically built. And I'll show you why uh, in just one moment. So we've done that one. Put our dribble, it looks good. And we should, again, just be able to play that and it should should work. So this is close to best practice because we haven't seen much in the way of sort of slippage on, on feed and so forth. However, if you do have that particular problem, one of the ways of fixing that is to try and match what you've done on the avatar configuration. So you can see this avatar definition create from this model. If you click the configure button, it'll throw you into a new scene with this uh, sort of uh, editor. And the thing we want to do is we actually want to adjust the range of various muscles to match what we have on our avatar. Um, so for instance, if we go here, open and close, you can see that's the all the muscles fully opened and extended, all the muscles fully closed. Now, obviously you can't actually get into that position because your body stops you, but if the muscles were all closed, that is how you'd look. So if we take a, a screenshot of this, I'm gonna do that just for the, sake of comparison. I'm just gonna paste it into paint just for the sake of having this, this side by side. So we have uh, the humanoid there. What we can do is we can play with some of these um, these values. So I'm gonna re reset all the, like, I don't even have to reset all the values. I can actually adjust um, the ranges that uh, these things are allowed to go. So as you can see here, so we can fully expand out the muscles. So for instance, let's say the head head nod there, we can actually change the range of how the muscle is interpreted. So as I said before, when you've got fully closed and fully open animations, these ranges actually indicate how far the, um, the muscle can stretch and, and not stretch. And when the animations are remapped, it'll be remapped to this scale. This means that you can actually adjust your, um, your avatar to try and match ours. So for instance, if I pull in our avatar, let's go back to our 2015 male. Just have a look at him, we can figure that one. Let's see here, again, we're probably gonna get a very close result from this one. This is not gonna to be too deviated. Um, however, as you can see here, this is our avatar thrown into the same position. And if we do a comparison between the two, it's almost the same. Uh, I suspect that there's not too much in the way of difference. Um, our feet are a little bit less, less tilted there. So maybe we bring the range in on that. Hands and feet look okay. The angles, I think there's a slightly more extreme bend on the back. So what we might do here when we bring our, our T-pose in that we're adjusting, I'll just go back to this one. In fact, what I should have done is I should have taken another screenshot of the human one. So I'll, I mean the science-based one. So I'll just grab the 2015 male again, go configure and uh, fully extend him. So you'll just need to do this twice, once for open and once for close. So again, let's paint. Let's try and line this up so I've got a clear clear reference. It'd be nice if Unity would actually let you um, throw the um, image on a the background there. It actually would be quite handy. Um, but in this particular case, I'm just gonna grab the T-pose again. Configure. Now this is, as I said, it's a pretty minor result, so we're not gonna see a lot of change. Um, the overall mapping between the two is the same, but what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to open up both bodies and get a similar result when you pull these sliders around. Um, so in this particular case, I think that yes, this one's got a slightly more extreme back stem, so that's probably on the spine. Yep. So I think what we need to do is we need to just adjust this range here. So does it need to be more extreme or less extreme? Probably less, less extreme, but then we've got our, um, pelvis here that needs to be adjusted and that'll be the chest one so chest front and back is is this one I just might move that a 
that's probably a little bit closer. So this is the, the kinds of range. Now I'm only adjusting this one because I've got this set to close. Um, when I've got it open, I want it to be in the other, other end and we'd need to take a second screenshot and do this. This particular step is a little bit tedious. Um, however, you only need to do this once per skeletal rig that you're working with. So for instance, if you're working with a skeletal rig from another, another virtual world, or you're working with a skeletal rig that you've been using, or you've got the 3ds Max biped or whatever you want to be using, um, the key thing to remember is you just want, want to set up this avatar once. Once you've set up the avatar, you can just simply reuse that um, avatar. It's got all these settings baked in and you can just immediately import your animations. Um, it does make life a little bit easier. So we've got our animations, they're all good. Um, when I hit apply and change this avatar, it will have also re-imported the thing using it. I think we might see a little bit less foot, foot uh, drift on this one. I'm not 100% sure, but we might. Yeah, it's close enough. There's still a little bit, but uh, there's not much we can do there. One of the things to note though is the IK foot placement that uh, Unity does, does kind of hold poses in, in placement. So you can toggle that preview there. We use it, um, so when you're previewing, having it toggled on doesn't do any harm. Okay, so I've got all this stuff. Um, the next thing we want to do is, because this is a animation for an animation overrider, we've got to make sure it's looped. So we just click loop time, um, loop pose. That means Unity will try and force it into a loop. This one already matches because you can see that little green light there, but if your animation does not loop perfectly, then it'll be um, yellow or red, depending on how bad the loop transition is going to be. Nonetheless, if you tick the pose, Unity will make it loop one way or another. It'll do that by smushing the start and end frames a little bit. Um, all the other settings we're not really gonna play with. However, there is one uh, setting that is worth just knowing about. Uh, this is not useful for um, animation overriders specifically, but it is useful for gestures and things, and that is the mask. Now the mask lets you basically adjust what this animation affects. So here I'm gonna make the animation not affect the legs. In this particular case, there's no animation. It's coming from our default animations rather than the, the built-in ones. We can change whatever we like here um, and just mask on various bits and pieces. If you don't wanna mask on the whole avatar, you can also do it on a per transform basis. Um, however, then you need to build a mask and all the rest of it. So we don't need to do that today. Nonetheless, useful just to have. Um, everything else should be good. If you are doing root motion, that is for instance, you're actually moving the avatar physically around um, as part of your animation, just make sure you set your root, root motion nodes because that often is important for getting that. It's usually you set the hips or the feet node or whatever you're using as your, your root node. Um, that can be useful. Okay, so we've got our animation all cleaned up, good to go. So the first step to creating an animation override is we're gonna override the idle with this. I'm just gonna create my clothing item settings. Go down to my animation controllers. Let's just set this to one. This is gonna be a Unix X animation. There's no reason not to. I'll set this to my idle. And I can just drop my animation in there. Now notice this is called mixamo.com because that's where it came from. However, you can edit the names of the animations when you import it. So just if you go to the animation tab, you can see here the clips. I can just rename this to Dribble Idle. Doesn't really matter, but um, let's apply. And just give it a second. Okay. Right, Dribble Idle is good to go. Um, so this particular one is actually almost ready to upload. There's not a lot, a lot of complicated process for doing these animation overriders. The only thing we need to do is just add that upload to good. Uh, let's set this for clothing. It is a clothing item. Um, there should be a category for, oops, uh, four animations in here somewhere, I think. If not, we would need to create one. In fact, I might create one just for the sake of having something. I think, yeah, we probably do need to create an animation override one because I don't think we've got any, um, any other category. So I will add that at some point fairly soon, but for the moment, I'm just gonna call it an accessory miscellaneous. Um, we will add a de dedicated character. So we call this dribble, dribble idle animation. Uh, just for reference, as a general note, Mixamo have actually explicitly authorized science-based creators to use um, their animations. So you can actually bring those in yourself. They're one of the few providers who have provided an explicit written authorization for um, bringing animations. So this one I'll call another Mixamo. Um, we would normally create icons and the rest of it, but for now, I'm just gonna set this to um, license from store or website. This will be Mixamo. Okay, so broadly speaking, that's all good to go. We should be ready to 
ready to upload. So I'm just going to drop this into a virtual goods. So this is our triple AO. And then we can get into the more complicated bits, which are um, animation overriders and actually building a complex animation overrider. Now, I think I've covered some of these bits and pieces maybe piecemeal before, but it would be good to actually cover this in full. Um, so I'm just going to select select this guy. Uh, we're good to go. I'm going to upload this in that way. We can have a look at it later. I might even publish this one to the live server. I'll put an icon on it and and push it up just so you guys can, can test it out. Um, be aware that the new animation overrides feature, I'm not 100% sure which viewer version that it requires to work. I have a feeling that 1B7, which is the current live one, does support that particular feature. Um, however, I'm not 100% sure if the previous viewer, which some people are still using, does support it or not. Um, all right, so we've got that one. That's a simple animation, single animation override. Now, if we want to override the entire avatar, that means we actually need to have a plan for this. We need to say, okay, what animations are we going to override? We're going to override move forward, move backwards, turn left, turn right, fly, all those bits and things you need to think about because you're going to have to build an animation rig that covers all of those. Um, and to do that, I'm going to go back to back to Mixamo and I'm going to grab a whole bunch of a whole bunch of animations. So we'll grab some walks, we'll grab some runs. Um, so why don't we do a zombie? That would be a fun one. Do they have enough animations for me to do this? That is the question. Let's find out. Okay, so we've got a zombie idle. I'm just gonna download this. Uh, I do have to thank Adobe and Mixamo for producing the site because it is very useful. So we've got a zombie idle. We've got a zombie crawl. Oh, perfect. <laughs> it's going to be a fun one to do. Okay, zombie running. Right. Um... Uh, zombie running. Let's see what else have we got that we need. We need a zombie turn. We actually only need one turn. We only need a left and a right. Now that's not a particularly great turn because it's not while walking. It's an idle one. Uh, so I'm, we might have to do a bit of mangling to get this to work. But that's the fantastic thing of what about what I'm going to show you is just the, the level of mangling and mixing we can do in animations. So we've got our zombies attacks. Okay, so we've got most of this stuff we want. Um, there's probably going to be a bunch we're missing, but that's okay. I'm going to go with some flying animations. I think they've got a few of them. They may or may not. Yes, oh, that works. Yeah. Now, we don't have probably all the levels of transition animations and things that we do on our main main avatar, but uh, it's certainly possible for you to, to do this. Um, okay, so we've got a... Sure, why not? Uh, do we have a jump, perhaps? Jump animations are actually a particularly special um, group of animations, um, and I'll talk about that as we build it. But one of the things you've got to watch out for is that jumps need to start straight away. They need to be instantaneous. So what you need is, for instance, here you can see the animation's already starting uh, at the beginning. All right. Um, so we've got a lot of... Uh, Animations here. Let's set up our AO. So this, we're going to create a new folder in here. I'm just going to call this one full AO. I'm going to build this animation controller just for the sake of the sake of showing this one off. All right. Loading, flying, zombie turn, zombie running, zombie crawl, zombie idle. I actually didn't think we got a zombie walk. Just see if we got a zombie walk, because I'd like to actually use a separate animation for this. Um, if there's a shambles. Yeah, perfect. All right. All right, so we got almost all of this. Now to start building an animation controller, we've got a few things to care about. 
um, we need to build in parameters. Parameters are bits of information that our animation system is going to feed into your animation controller. That's things like what direction the user is turning, um, whether they are moving forward or back, how quickly they're moving forward, how quickly they're moving backwards, whether they're flying, whether they're jumping, all those bits and pieces are fed into the controller and produce a an output. Um, so I've got our full animations here. I'm just going to select all of these animations. Uh, we're going to do this all at once. This is going to be a humanoid. We're going to create a copy it from another avatar, which will be our T-Pose. T-Pose avatar, because we've already got that nice and set up. And unfortunately, I am out of caffeine. Just give this a second. We'll just make sure all the animations are looped too because that's fairly important. Uh, if the loop animations are not looped, you'll find that they'll freeze in the last frame instead of actually doing what you need them to do. So, uh, animations here. Can't do this all at once, unfortunately, but uh, we'll call this one where this is floating. I'm gonna name these as I set the loops because uh, we're gonna end up with a lot of very confusingly named animations. Otherwise, it'll be quite difficult to actually isolate which is which especially as we start building the um, the blend trees and things that uh, go on here. So I've got here, uh, what are we, we're flying. Flying forward. Notice we don't have a flying backwards. We're gonna reverse some of these animations for that. Um, that may or may not work. We'll have to sort of peek around which, which ones we can reverse, which ones we can't. Flying reverse, we might not be able to. But uh, some of the other ones we will. So I'm just going to loop this one. This can be jump. Let's do this one by one. This is zombie crawl. Since we've got new crouch animations in our controllers, why don't we use them? Now zombie idle. Nearly done. Two more to go. is zombie turn. Now, as I said before, the turn animation may not do exactly what we want. We're gonna to have to play around with this one. We might even duplicate it and start using them some of those masks. Um, let's see how it works when in combined with things like the walking animations and so forth. Okay, so we've got all of our animations. It's time to make an animation controller. So we're gonna call this one animation controller. This is gonna be our zombie AO. And again, because of uh, the license that uh, Mix might have, I actually should be able to upload this one. Uh, so I'm going to first create our basic um, basic state, which is going to be sort of what happens when there's no other particular events going on. Actually, first things first, I'm going to create the parameters, then I'll create the basic state. So the basic the parameters are the things that we're going to feed in from externally. These are these properties here. So we have magnitude. Magnitude is the speed that you are moving. Um, that's sort of relative to the forward direction. So uh, if you're walking forward, then it's one. If you're walking backwards, it's negative one. Well, actually, sorry, if you're running forwards, it's one. If you're running backwards, it's negative one. If you're walking forwards, then it's 0 0.5. If you're walking backwards, um, same thing. Okay, so we've got uh, magnitude, um, so angle. Angle is whether you're turning left or right. Pretty straightforward. With the fly vertical property. Fly vertical is basically the direction you're flying if you're doing up and down. Um, just a pretty straightforward one. Uh, floor angle, we're not gonna use that one. That's a much more complicated uh, one to play with, but we'll just add the parameter anyway. 
Floor angle is falling, so this is an is, that means it's a Boolean property. It's falling, we don't have any fall animations in this AI, so we'll ignore that completely. Is jump, that's is the player jumping. Is flying. And I think we have the last one is, is crouch. Okay, straightforward. Got all our parameters there, and they're going to be fed with values. Uh, so the first thing first, we're going to create our blend tree. This is going to be our normal walking blend. So, um, I'm going to rename this. Rename it up here. This is going to be our idle walk matrix. We're also going to have a crouch one. So do we have a crouch idle? In fact, we might need to get a crouch idle. Do we have a Sure, there's one in here somewhere. Do we have something on the ground? Just need to find something not moving, but uh, on the... Yeah, you're closer. Not quite crouching, but... Um, or on the ground, but I guess... Uh, I guess that's what we're going to have to use, unless we've got a, a crouch one here. Yes, there we go. That's perfect. Use this crouching idle one. I'm just going to re-import that one because we do need this for our second um, second rig, which will make sense in just a moment as we start building this. Okay, so crouching idle set. And I just need to do those same tweaks we did on the other. Other animations, marking it humanoid, bringing in the rig, and then setting the loop. So, just as a refresher, I guess. Humanoid, create mother, T pose, T pose, and then animations, uh, loop. Um, all right, that should do it all. Okay, so we got our, got our own. Okay, and the second matrix we're gonna build is gonna be our crouching. There's gonna be a transition between the two, um, and we're gonna make that transition based on if the crouch flag is set. So, we have this guy, um, the conditions for this one. So to go from idle to crouch, which is the direction of the arrow, we're gonna set, um, is crouch to true. To go backwards from crouch to idle, we're going to again do the same thing, but just set to is false. And that just provides the transition between the two. We need to do one between flying as well, um, so we might make a third one, which is our flying matrix. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. So we're going to just add a third bit of complexity to this. We're going to transition from idle to flying. Based on is flying, it's true, and we'll do the same here. So we've got two, two sets, it's four. Whoop. And then on the way back. So we'll go back to this one if is flying is false and, and this is important, is crouching is true. So this is if you go from flying to crouch. Not sure if that's actually an easy thing to do, but um, I guess it can be done. Uh, so we'll go from flying, flying is not true, and is crouching is not true either. It's false. Okay, so these guys are our, our basics. This is basically the three states of our avatar. Um, there is potentially another one you can do with falling, um, and there's a lot you can do in the way that these blends. You don't actually have to blend straight from state machine to state machine. You often go through an intermediary node, which is a, just a simple animation, so you build your own transition animations. We're not gonna do that. It's a little bit too much work today, and uh, we don't have all the, the wide diversity of animations we need to do that. Um, so our blend tree is going to be two directional, and it's gonna be um, 2D simple directional. And our two parameters are going to be magnitude and angle. We're going to start adding animations. So we're going to add motion field. So I've got um, two animations here. 
and we're just going to start dropping these in. So this is our idol. So we want to need the first one is we need uh, our zombie idol. So we can drop the zombie idol into the zero zero. So we've got the very basics starting here. Then we've got our zombie walking. So zombie walk. And then we've got zombie uh, running. We also need to inject turning. So we've got these three. This is our forwards. So we actually need to repeat a bunch of these. Uh, one, two. So we need our walking backwards. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to simply reverse the animation. It's not the best way of doing this, but uh, we will do it anyway. And we've got that one. And now we need a turn left and a turn right. And again, same thing. We're just going to take our turning. Zombie turn, zombie turn. Okay, so I'm just going to set this speed to minus one. That's what this third parameter is, and that's going to reverse the animation on those particular things. So minus one and minus one for our walks. So now we've got these positioned, and basically what this means is as we change these values, the it'll blend between the animations based on the proximity to the nearest animation. So magnitude should actually run from... So magnitude, I'm going to go... Actually, I'm going to use the Y instead of X here for these positions. So idle is going to be 0, 0. Walk is going to be 0 0.5. Run is going to be 1. And it's going to be 0, 1. So you can sort of get a rough idea of what I'm doing here. So it's going to be negative 5, and that's going to be negative 1. And both these guys are on 0, 0 as well. Okay, so we've got our animations there. Finally, U and U are going to be negative zero I think uh wait it's gonna be negative one it's for turning left and turning right I'm not 100% sure which one is which we might have those back to front but we just change the speed if it is okay so as our animation as our magnitude is set to zero there should be no movement it just sort of should just sit there idling right and as we input increase the magnitude if I flip those around, I have indeed flipped those around. Okay. Now we should have this. Now as I set the animation speed, you can sort of see we go from, you can walk backwards, or shamble backwards as you can see. So that's our walk backwards, that's our run backwards. It's a little bit slower and I might speed that up. But as you can see here, so that's our very slow movement, slow walk, and then you can go towards a more run. And then we can actually twist the animation a little bit. So I've got our turns. And likewise to turn around the other way. Now, this anim animation is quite slow for the turning, so I might speed it up a little bit. And to do that, I'm just going to take, change this to three. And that will speed, it, speed the turns up a bit. Right. So that's our basics of our first first animation loop. Pretty straightforward, gets the job done. Um, we need to repeat the process on flying. Now I'm gonna do a very basic job of this one. I'm not gonna spend quite as much time, but uh, as you can see here, this is our blend tree. In fact, I can't unfortunately copy and paste the blend tree. If I'd done that before, I'd set up all those transitions, that would've been easier. Okay, so I've got our, our basic one there. I'm just gonna take him out of here. Now, I'm gonna go to my crouch matrix and I'm just going to repeat the same process. So I've got a 2D simple directional. I'm going to use angle and magnitude again. So we need in fact what I may do is I might just bring this into a 1D animation uh, for this one just because we don't have turn animations on the fly. Um, so if I just take the flying one this is flying forward. Yep. So I'm just going to bring in a flying forward flying forward. In fact, I've only got three animations here, don't I? So let's take a few of these out. Oh, we've got our floating, which is our idle. Okay, so here we've got, um, we need to set this one from angle to magnitude. So there, it just we need to set the threshold to minus. Don't automate the thresholds. I'm gonna set that one to minus one. Zero and one. Right, so now as we go backwards, 
and forwards. We're using the same animation, but you can sort of see there's a nice, nice transition between them. So at half speed flying, you'll look like that. At full speed flying, you fly, look like that. Uh, and I forgot to loop the flying animations, I think. Oh no. So there we go. And I'll set that just a bit. Oops, I've got this wrong. Minus one. one. I'm sure someone just spotted that. Okay, so we need a, a better flying backwards animation, but you can sort of see this is this is what we're doing. Okay, right. Pretty straightforward. Not too much that we need to, to touch on this one, so I'll just uh, go back to the base layer. Finally, that was the flying one. I think I was... Oh, God damn it. That was the crouch one I was supposed to be doing. Oh, well. Uh, just need to copy the same setup, so I'm just going to swap the animations, but it should otherwise be all the same. So I'm just going to be crouching idle instead. That was silly. I've got zombie crawl. Effect for this one, I think. No, I don't. Sorry. This one. So idle, crawling. And as you can see, these transitions are quite decent. So it's not perfect, but they're they're not bad. So it's crawling backwards, so as we expect, and crawling forwards. I'm just going to quickly redo the flying animation we just did. And I'll just uh, set this one to one, two. We need to sort of add curves and things to those, those various other ones. So building a full AO from scratch like this is a large job. It's much larger than just simply swapping out a couple of animations. The result is though, you've got a lot more control over exactly how it should look. Um, so this one's our flying one. So it's got floating. Flying forward, flying backwards. Okay, and we're just gonna change the thresholds. So this one is right pretty good um, so we have all of the basic animations we're going to attach to this controller here now we've done this now that we could add for instance we did add a jumping once maybe what we'll do is we'll just add a we'll create one more which is going to be a jump so we'll just drag the animation in and it'll create a new node now this is just a single one-off animation um, we'll create the transitions from idle and crouch And then we'll go back to so this one's going backwards and the condition for going out of jump is going to be there's no condition in fact it's going to just actually no there does have to be a condition is jump needs to be false so you can see it does a nice job of sort of trying to blend the animations you can see these two curves here you've got the two white lines that's actually the the overall magnitude of the two motions so if you can try and get those close together it will actually sort of uh, nicely align. Unity will try and pick something that will blend into each other nicely, but uh, you never know exactly how it's going to go. So that's our jump animation. Oh, we just need to set the jump animation on the same. So just jump. True. Okay, so we've got... Uh, So this now we do need to worry about the uh, entry times. So the entry time here actually needs to be right at the start um, because we need the we might set the transition duration. So this is how quickly it's going to move from one animation to the other. But for the case of jump, we actually need this to move fairly quickly. So I'm going to set this to move to jump over 0.2 seconds. And by the end of here. As you can see here, it's fully on the jump track. In fact, we might even set it to a bit shorter because jumps are something you need to have instantaneously responsive when a user plays with them. So it goes from flying straight to jump here. Uh, that normally is an animation that isn't possible to do, but uh, um, unless we'll do the same. And we're just going to knock that one down to there and the transition duration is going to be that one. And again, it'll just go from idle to idle to jump straight away. Finally, We've got our crouched jump again. If you wanted to make a more cinematic approach to this, you don't actually have to do that. You could actually just go from boom. So it's actually got some uh, some delays there. I would probably not recommend that, to be honest. I think that let's 
let's start with the basics and, and do it quick because that feels more natural. You might feel like it needs to be a little bit longer though, just for the just for the crouch one. So I've got that at 0.2 seconds, uh, 0.1. Okay, this is our animation control. There is one last step that we need to do before we actually upload this animation. And that is we need to set up the um, AO for it. So we're gonna create a new empty game object. This is going to be our zombie AO. And our zombie AO uses our zombie AO component. So I'm just gonna grab the we'll grab a virtual good and we'll add a clothing item settings. Right, so we'll go down to animation controllers and clothing item settings. This is unisex. Again, animations are pretty straightforward. There's there's no need to actually set um, animations as for one gender or the other. Um, so we've got this one, there's nothing else that's changing. The only thing we need to do is we just need to copy these labels that we've used for our, our various uh, things. So this one's just called magnitude. Magnitude, angle, floor angle is falling, is jump, is flying, is crouch. Those are our basic uh, property names. So we've got all these, good to go. That's pretty much all we need to do other than just again, we just need to fill out the virtual good form. So I'm just gonna go close, accessory miscellaneous. And again, we need to add a category for this, which is called zombie AO. Otherwise, this one is, again, just about good to go. We'll just prefab it and upload it. Okay, we are good to go. So I'm just gonna push this one up as well. Right, that's our our um, animation. Now, uh, last thing, since we do have just a couple of minutes, I might go into the very basics of uh, gestures. Gestures are single shot animations um, that can be played through an inventory item. Uh, and the basis of those is the avatar effects component. Now, there is a lot of good YouTube tutorials on this component. We have not modified this component much over the last two years. So all the old YouTube tutorials for it are still valid. We haven't sort of edited much. However, there is one thing that I will just cover today just for the sake of it. Um, and that is, let's one, find an animation that we wanna play. I think we, we'll just try and find one of these zombie ones just for the heck of it. Um, pick up one more. Uh, let's see, what have we got that? Zombie death, why not? Nice animation. So I'm just gonna grab you. And we're gonna go with gesture test. Now all the existing tutorials on animations are gonna give you a lot of good information about how to build these. I'm not gonna go over those. What I am gonna go over though is just the conditions required to make an a animation loop seamlessly. Um, now we've made some, some changes to how animations are loaded. Uh, one of the problems we've got with animations is that we run them on the server and that means that we sort of have to do a little bit of looping logic and there's a bit of a gap between um, dances and things between when they start and finish and that's not ideal uh, so what we've added is we've recently added in and it'll be available in the next few is this uh, what we're calling the, the sort of the fast loop or shortcut loop and that just uses a little bit of client side logic to to bridge the gap now to do this uh, we just need to create a gesture so the first thing we do is we've got an avatar effect this is the basic um, basic uh, element of a gesture. The actual gender section doesn't matter anymore. Uh, we had that in in originally just for the sake of, of keeping the marketplace flexible, but the reality is that uh, gestures you kind of don't care. Um, so we do play them on, on both now. Um, next thing we're going to do is, uh, this is gonna be a single animation, but we will set the loops checkbox here. And maybe it's not good to have a, a looping by animation, I might just reuse one of our idols uh, just for the sake of I'll use the floating one. And um, we've got avatar effect, single animation, animate single avatar. That's the one. 
Now, I want to talk about, uh, actually, there's a second thing I want to talk about. And this is also a new feature. Um, now, for a while, it's been possible to build um, facial animations on the platform. The way to do a facial animation is first, I'm going to take in the, let's take the Fit 2015 male. Hello there, sir. The way to do the animation has been to, in, for instance, Max or Maya or whatever tool you're using, Motion Builder, um, we've got attached to our avatar a whole section of blend shapes. In fact, I'm going to take this dot version now and it might run a little minute or two over, so I apologize for the masterclass. Um, but one of the things that's worth coming on is these facial animation sections. So there's a few that you can't animate safely. Do not animate the ones starting with slider in our blend shape because uh, that's going to break things. Um, however, everything labeled mouth animation, facial animation, those ones you're free to animate. So what we could do, for instance, if we want to make the eyebrow wiggle up and down, let me try and find one of our eyebrows. Uh, there is a lot of, here we go, right eyebrow up. You can see here, if you look at it, the left eyebrow, you'll see that one goes up and down. So in Max and Maya, you can create an animation track that affects this particular blend shape. You can also do it inside Unity. So I'm just going to create an animation. Gonna, yes, I think I can just, I'll just create it on here. Um, so I've got to create this animation over This is going to be our facial animation test. I'm just going to call this eyebrows. So um, I'm going to hit record. Now the only anim property I'm going to animate is going to be that slider on the face. So I just need to find the one. Where is it? Facial, right eyebrow up. I'm going to start at zero. So one actually just sort of inserts the so it's the keyframe, and then we're going to jump forward to 50, 500 milliseconds, and we'll set the eyebrows to one. In fact, for a funnier animation, let's make this really take some time. We'll set this up to so it takes three seconds. So one, two, three. Why not? It'll be funny. Okay, um, so go here should I make that particular property I just want to make sure it actually is editing this uh, right so we need to go here the value for one is uh, sorry for um, so let's select this let's select the keyframe uh, so the value for one uh, for a full animation is not one it's 100 don't ask me why uh, it just is. So as you can see here, we've got this left eyebrow going up slowly. If I hit play. And for a bit of drama, I might actually get it to go to halfway, just a little bit faster. So I might go to 70 there over the course of... Okay, so we've got an animation there and we'll just head back to 1.0 at this point. Oh, sorry, zero. So that just returns it to normal. So slowly raised eyebrow and then back to normal. Simple animation clip. I'm going to stop recording. Um, this should be a facial animation. We've got our eyebrow. It's all good. Um, so to create this one, this could actually be part of an animation overrider, but the simple way to do this is just set this to the face layer. You can do it on the body layer, but one of the problems is that the body layer, unless it's probably masked, it'll stop, stop the actual normal avatar animations, which means the avatar will start standing. So if you go from a seated pose to a facial animation, you will stand up while seated, and that doesn't look quite correct. Um, so if you set it to the face layer, it'll only affect the face. Runs on a separate animation loop over the top. So if you've got existing animations, they'll actually run over with those. So if you've got a seat animation you're already sitting on, it's on the face layer, it will override, um, but it, it'll add to the animation rather than replace it. Uh, so that's what that, that clip's there for. And you can just drop that clip into there. Simple, straightforward stuff. But let's go back to our gestures because uh, we've only got five minutes to go um, and we're gonna cover some of this stuff. So I've got, I wanna do a looped animation. So I'll go back to my Crouching Idle, for instance, I can drop that in there. I can just use the base layer. There's also a separate body layer for overriding just the body, same way as the face. We've just added that for the, for the heck of it because I'm sure someone will come up with a use for it and it's easy enough to do. Um, so all this stuff is, is straightforward. Start animation clip. The only thing you've got to do for the fast pass is you've got to one, not add any um, other 
items to the animation it needs to be just the avatar effect and the avatar animation effect if you've got other elements then the whole animation does need to be set up and torn down and it will introduce a small gap um, in your animation we're working on fixing that and producing that gap but that is something to be just be aware of um, the other thing you got to do is you've got to make sure that this is a looped animation that is to say the loop time has got to be ticked on the actual animation itself if it is not done so then it will not loop uh, and if there is any other components other than those basic components then that will not happen um so the last thing we'll do is we'll i'm gonna upload two animations i'm gonna upload the eyebrow one just for the hell of it um it's a fun one to put in so i'll just add my uh virtual good this one's gonna be a gesture which is there so this is gonna be our zombie dance so gesture dances single person um, a test animation Right, again, right, uh, that's all we need to have on this one. That's all we should have on this one if we want this to loop seamlessly. So, next thing we have to do is just upload our, our eyebrow animation because I want to get that up. Uh, so I'll just do the same thing. I'll just duplicate this gesture. This is our eyebrow gesture. And our eyebrow gesture is going to go on the face layer. And our eyebrows clip. Here we go. Um, right. Uh, nothing else we need to do here. I'm just going to go ahead and upload that as well. So this is our I do have a grin on my face for that. Okay. So eyebrow gestures, and we're good to go. Um, right, so next uh, step is we just need to hit upload on these. So it's ready to upload. Um, just one more note, just quickly, while we are discussing um, blend shape animations. The blend shapes are built into the avatars. You cannot modify those blend shapes uh, through these animations. Uh, we may introduce a way to actually add it, upload your own blend shape animations as well. One of the things we've recently done has been those body morphs. And the body morph feature actually extra can extrapolate out to us supporting blend shape animations um, that are user driven. So that's something we're, we're going to think about in the future. It's not uh, lined up for an item of work just yet. But uh, if there's a lot of demand for it, please hit us up because we do know how to do it. Um, the other thing to mention is that because we do not have, um, because these are built in animations, we are likely to improve them over time. Many of these basic blend shape animations have been roughly done. I think there's a few of them that, that need a bit more work. Um, so, for instance, if you set to smile, it's okay, but it's not a full t toothy smile. We're likely to make that, that particular slider go more extreme at the 100 points. So, just be a little bit aware that that could happen in the future. Um, Mostly it's these sort of basic ones that are a little bit less than less than ideal. Um, however, that will improve things over time as well. So if you are aiming, for instance, to do a smile, then adjusting those particular blend shapes is a good idea because they will get better over time. Um, okay, so I think that probably covers off a few things. I think today we've covered um, two, type, two ways of doing animation overriders, and we've also covered um, so the basics of facial animation, gestures, and looping animations. If you have any further questions about these things, feel free to ping us on Discord. Um, we are around Monday to Friday. Uh, weekends, not so much. There is some staff around, but it's probably best to save the technical questions for Mondays. Um, so we do have those things available. If that doesn't work for you, feel free to email us. Uh, thank you all for watching. Um, there is a class list posted on our blog, which will contain what next week has. I have actually forgotten. Um, unfortunately, things got disrupted last week by my uh, puppy deciding to uh, ingest a, a bottle of um, Panadol, which is like Tylenol in the US. So uh, next week we should be so slowly catching up on our previously amended uh, schedule. Um, nonetheless, keep an eye on the blog. It will post what's next week. Um, thank you all for watching, and I look forward to... Uh